When we think of our ancestors, we imagine them as enclosed in their cultural boundaries. But this is not entirely true. Some clues from the mists of time lead us to think that in the Bronze Age, distant peoples had strong connections. Let's travel back in time to take a closer look at this fascinating topic. The heat was unbearable, but the granary officer had an essential task to complete. He was working at the city archives, and there was grain, barley and oil to be delivered. The year was 3500 BC. Welcome to Bronze Age Mesopotamia. The officer carefully inspected the cargo to ensure that no one took more than was ordered. Accounting was vital in a complex society like this one. After some minutes, he nodded, and the servants took away the cargo. He closed the storehouse doors and used a wet piece of clay to seal the entrance. He then took a small stone cylinder hanging from his neck and rolled it on the clay. The cylinder left an impression on the clay. It was a kind of recognizable signature that was very hard to forge. In this way, the door seal couldn't be broken by these loyal servants. The cylinder seal he used was a very peculiar one. It left the impression of a pair of mythical creatures. We don't know what they called them. We use the modern name Sepopod, a leopard and a serpent combined into a new animal. The animals are engaged in a struggle. Maybe they represented the force of chaos that must be tamed. Sadly, we don't know anything about them. The officer was living in Uruk, the first city in history. At the time, this city was already very ancient. It boasted the staggering number of 40,000 people inside its walls and more than 90,000 just outside it. In the Bronze Age world, it was simply a marvel. We can easily imagine traders from all around the region roaming through its streets, looking for bargains and trading opportunities. One of such traders had to come from very far away. At the time, his country was a patchwork of small kingdoms, in the process of being unified by a single king. He was an ancient Egyptian from the Nile Valley. The Egyptian trader saw the granary officer sealing the door. Sealing their seals solved the problem in a very simple way. If you put a guard in front of the granary, he could seal from you. You had to trust him very much, and trusted people are not easy to be found. Do you know the old saying, opportunity makes the thief? Can you really charge someone to guard an immense wealth, like a year worth of harvesting? In Uruk, cylinder seals slowly evolved century after century. The first one appeared more than nine millennia ago. But in Egypt, they appeared in a very sudden way. They clearly came from Mesopotamia and they weren't a local invention. This is a big piece of evidence of a close connection between the two countries. And you know, the serpa bars on the seal were too cool to be ignored. When King Namur unified Egypt into one kingdom, a stone pallet was made. On it, two giant serpa parts could be seen. Servants keep them tied with a rope, a sign that they have been captured. The forces of chaos had been tamed by the king, who was the guardian of cosmic order on Earth. One of the first pieces of evidence of Egyptian kingship has a Mesopotamian influence on it. It really shows how ideas were moving around on such long distances. 
Another very interesting evidence of this close connection can be seen on the Gebel el Arak knife. It was an obsidian blade with a carved ivory handle. On it, you can see a man who is taming wild animals. The knife has been found in central Egypt, but the man depicted on it has a beard and a hat similar to the ones of Uruk's priests. Okay, so people from Egypt clearly visited Mesopotamia. They spent time in Uruk, became accustomed to the local culture and brought new ideas at home. But why go such a long way? The travel had to be very dangerous. In the markets of Uruk, ancient Egyptians could find something very precious. It was a stone of the most marvelous blue color you can imagine. Today we call it by its Latin name, Lapis Lazuli. This stone was extracted in modern day Afghanistan. Then it was sold in the Indus Valley, and from here it reached Uruk. Today we are accustomed to having bright colors around us, but the world of Bronze Age people was quite different. It had the color of mud bricks and undyed linen. Master jewel makers used lapis lazuli to make incredible objects. For the people of the time, such creations had to appear as made in the heavens. But you know, influences of this kind are rarely one-sided. I want to show you one last thing in this regard. Starting from the Narmer palette and down in the centuries, Egyptian kings have always been represented while smiting an enemy with a war mace. This style influenced the Mesopotamians, who for a while adopted the Egyptian royal style. We can see it on the so-called Stele of Vultures, where the king of Mesopotamia is smiting his enemies with a terrible blow. Ancient people couldn't just buy a ticket, board a plane and fly to another country. Their world was much smaller than ours. But this doesn't mean that their cultural borders were closed. Actually, they were more than ready to welcome ideas and concepts from afar. The examples we have seen are just the tip of the iceberg. The Bronze Age people will eventually create one of the first globalized societies in human history. Next time, we'll have a quick recap on Egyptian history as we are approaching a grand finale, the fall of the Old Kingdom. Subscribe and hit the bell to not miss it. See you next time in the mists of time.